Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in, bring your Bible. Get something to take notes on because we're expecting God to speak something to you. Answers for your life. Amen. We have been taking a lot of time now dealing with a certain topic called walking in love. Why? Because your faith life is connected to your love walk. Whether you know it or not, there's an invisible thread between your love walk and your wallet. Whether you realize it or not, people don't realize that they have fought their way out of increase sometimes. If they get into strife, mm-hmm. strife destroys increase. Yes. Yes. Not only that, faith... Uh, Strife keeps your faith from working. Strife is so dangerous because it's not the flow of love Mm -hmm. and God's blessings are only able to be received when we're in the flow of love. Um, The blessings of God belong to us, but they're conditional. They're conditional uh, in the sense of we have to be in position of being a doer of the word to receive the, the, all the blessings that belong to us. Right. Healing belongs to you. Yes. Prosperity belongs to you. A peaceful home belongs to yes. you. Yes. We've been talking and ministering on the previous episode. We were talking about the home, raising children and things. Uh, a peaceful home belongs to you, but it's not automatic. You have That's to protect right. yeah. the flow of yeah. peace. Right. You have to establish the flow of peace, yes. protect it, yes. guard that in your, in your home, in your marriage, among your family. Yes. Amen. Yes. Why is that? Well, the word tells us in Romans 10 verse 17, it says that faith comes by hearing mm-hmm. and hearing by the word of God. But Galatians 5, 6 tells us faith works by love. So faith comes by hearing, but it doesn't work by hearing. Yeah. It works by love. So if our love isn't working, our faith isn't working. That's right. That's right. Strife means our faith quit working because it's not the flow of love. So the moment we choose to enter into strife, become a participant in strife, what we have just done is we have stepped outside of faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we're all believing for something. You should be believing yes. for something yes. every day. We need our faith in good working yes. order. Yes. That means we have to be very aggressive mm-hmm. about our stand against strife. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have to be very aggressive. Why? Because strife will rob you of health too. Right. Some people have fought their way into sickness. Yes. Because they got into such strife, it opened the door to the devil because strife is the devil's territory. When we're on the devil's territory, uh, then he's got a right to attack us. And one way he will attack is with sickness and disease. So you say, Pastor Nancy, this is Jesus the healer. I know. That's why we're trying to let you know what will rob you of your health. Because sometimes people, people just think, you know, if I quote healing scriptures, listen, that's right. Mm-hmm. Quote healing scriptures, but we have to be on love's territory when we're quoting them. That's yes. We can't be on sin's territory right. quoting healing scriptures and then wonder why, why isn't this working? Right. Yeah. right? right. But you know, some, we, this is why we teach it because some yes. people don't realize it. They've not been taught it. Yes. You know, brother Hagen, he would make this statement. Kenneth e. Hagen would state, I count more on my love walk to keep me healthy than on my confessions of faith. Right. 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 
And he said, if symptoms show up, the first place I check is my love walk. Yes. Yes. I make sure I'm walking in love. Why? Because when you're on love's property, when you're on love's territory, everything God's provided can be easily received. Yes. But if we're on sin's yes. territory, the blessings of God aren't flowing there. Mm -hmm. So it matters where you're walking. Yes. <laughs> you know, at your, own, at your home or wherever you live, there's a property line. Right. You can have one foot on your property and depending on how your property line is set up, you can have another foot on the neighbor's property. Yeah. <laughs> your left foot on your property, your right foot on the neighbor's yeah. property. And as long as you're standing on your property, your authority works. You get on their, mm -hmm. their property and your authority doesn't work on their property. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your authority works on your property where yes. love right. is our property. Yes. Amen. And as long as we walk in love, our authority works. Yeah because we're on love's property. But if we get on the devil's territory, yeah. step into sin, our authority quits working. We start rebuking and resisting things and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You say, well, the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But it says before that, submit yourself to God. Yes. <laughs> that means you're on, love's, on, on, on God's territory, on God's property, which is love territory. Amen. Amen. So this is why we think it important and know it's important for us to minister this direction because Jesus is the healer and we want to receive healing. So we want to tell, teach what will keep us from receiving healing. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, we've said it in previous episodes. Well, first go back and watch other episodes in this series if you've missed them because we don't want you to miss what was taught. But strife is the manifested presence of the devil. Yes. Yes. So to enter into strife is to throw the door open to the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. And when he comes in, he, you don't get to choose what he brings with him. Yes. He brings everything he is with him. Fear, yes. doubt, right. sickness, torment, lack. Amen. All those things. Yeah. So that's why we don't want to open the door to strife. We don't want to be a participant in strife. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh, I also said this on the previous episode, walking in love does not be, mean being permissive and quiet toward wrongdoing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Love is a protector. Yes. Love, yes. love will protect the atmosphere of your home and say, I'm not having strife here. That's yes. love talking yes. that, that will say Amen. that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not put, I'm not putting up with that strife mm -hmm. here. And, uh, you know, whatever you have to put out to keep peace, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. have, you know, uh, neighbors or whatever, and they get in strife. And sometimes you just got to say, not here, not here. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, going sure. on here. Yeah. Family yes. members, that's not going on here. Yeah, right. Amen. You have to enforce the law of love. Yes. Laws have to be enforced. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I mean, we have laws on the books of this nation and we have policemen. What are they called? Law enforcement officers. Every law has to be enforced and it's up to us to enforce the law of love in our life and in our home. If I'm walking in love with someone, that doesn't mean I'm agreeing with them if they're off the word. That's right. Love does not equal agreement. Love, you know, God loved us when we were yet sinners. He didn't agree with us as sinners, but he still loved us. So love doesn't mean you're agreeing with wrongdoing. Love means you're agreeing with the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we're not confused. We're not confused. Uh, we've, we've looked at James chapter three, verse 16, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Yes. When people get into strife, they lose the line of what is correct anymore. Yeah. Yes. Why? They become yes. confused. Yes. Right. Amen. But when you protect that flow of love, you're not confused about what, mm -hmm. what, uh, what love does and how love behaves yeah. and what you won't permit in the flow of love. Amen. Amen. So it says where envying and strife is, there is confusion. Look at this and every evil work. Mm -hmm. So that lets us know that strife will open the door, not just to uh, conflict, mm -hmm. but it can open the door to sickness, lack, mm -hmm. and, and anything else that the, that the kingdom of hell produces. Amen. And we said this on the previous episode, a love home means the end of strife and quarreling. Mm -hmm. It means the end of bitterness and selfish words and hateful words. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
I, I love what Joshua said. He said, as for me and my house, we will. We will. He didn't say I will. He said we. Those under my authority, we're serving the Lord. So he put a standard of, of God's word in place and said, this is our standard. And those who live in my house will live by this standard. Amen. Now, the thing is, it's always best to start that when kids are young. <laughs> sometimes if people don't start that, because sometimes people don't get saved until their kids are older. Right. And then they have to look to the Holy Ghost of how to help them in getting that flow of love demanded in their home. Amen. 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 But Joshua recognized that it was his responsibility to determine the atmosphere of his household, yes. to determine the direction of the, the members of his family. He didn't ask those members in his household which way they wanted to go. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He was the one who determined how they lived and then he trained them in that flow. He trained them in that flow. Even so, we know that living in obedience to the word is the right choice. So we choose that for our household and then we train our children in that flow. So it's our responsibility to train our children in the way they should go. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. Not the way he wants to go. The way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. One way a child should go is the way of love. Amen. Yes. Amen. You have to train a child in the way of love. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, like, I, like I said, I've talked in previous episodes about how my mother trained us. One thing she did not put up with, if we were criticizing people in the home, mm-hmm. if we were critical of people in the home, she'd say, stop that. That's a bad habit. That's good. That's good. Not putting up with that. That's right. right. What was she doing? She was training us in a higher way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Criticizing, fault finding, gossiping, mm-hmm. talking negative, all of that right. is a bad habit. Yes. It, will, it will undo your faith. Yes. It will undo your health. Yes. It will undo your finances. Yes. It will undo a, a, a marriage. Yes. It will undo a home. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Don't allow that to be practiced in your home. Yes. Amen. Because every day you're practicing some flow in your home. Every single day. And it is the job of the parent and not only that, the privilege of the parent to establish the law of that home and to enforce the law of that home. Amen. Amen. To talk about the faults, the failures, the Mm -hmm. sins of others in front of your children Mm -hmm. will cause them to become critical. Right. Yes. And it will cause them to be untrusting of everyone. Yes. That's so good. Amen. It will injure their ability, uh-huh. their spiritual development. Right. It right. will yes. injure their ability to cooperate with God because right. if they take on a critical nature, yeah. a critical way of thinking, yes. a critical yes. way of speaking, yes. a complaining way, yeah. Yeah. Right. a, 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 uh, a strifeful way. Yeah. Amen. Um, it won't just affect that situation they're talking about. It's going to affect what it, what flows into their hearts right. and what their spirit is okay yes. with. Yes. Yes. Never allow in your home someone to become critical of others. And you say, well, other people missed it. Everyone's missed it. And if it weren't for Jesus, we would all go to hell. That's right. That's what we all deserve. No one's perfect. I'm talking about in their in their natural, uh, in their natural self, yeah. everyone's got weaknesses, faults, mm-hmm. failures. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a low way of operating to focus on what's wrong. Mm-hmm. The highest way, the highest flow is we focus on what's right. That's right. Very good. Amen. 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 So never allow someone in your home to become critical of others because everyone then would be, uh, if I could say this, a candidate for criticism. That's right. Yes. Because no one's perfect. Mm-hmm. That's right. Don't do it in front of your children. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't let your children hear that and get them away from others who are critical or if they're around others that are critical, point it out to them later and say, that's not our flow. That's right. 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 
I know what you heard today, but that's not permitted in this home. Don't, don't carry that over. That's not permitted in you. You see, use those, use those things to teach your children and train them on. Um, but never allow anyone in your home to become critical of others. But listen to this, especially of those who are part of the body of Christ. Amen. The body is a family. Yes. Yes. We are God's family. Amen. And God, uh, we get in trouble with God if we cause problems in his family. Amen. That's one thing I appreciated about our parents. They would not let us cause problems in the family. Yeah. That's good. That's good. They said, you're not causing problems in this family. You're not getting into strife. You're not getting into gossip. You're not getting into t- backbiting and talking and criticizing one another. You're not doing that in this family. Amen. Uh, God's the same way. Right. He, he will not condone it. Even if someone misses it, we're authorized to help them. Very good. We're authorized to pray for them, but we're not authorized to push them down and point out and go tell others. You know, God said something to me years ago when we first started pastoring. Uh, When I started pastoring this church, he said, teach the people that if they see something personally, Mm -hmm. they see in person someone doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. He was referring to in the church family. He said, if they tell it to someone who can help, they're protecting the family. If they tell it to someone without the authority to help, they're gossiping and damaging the family. The love flow is love protects. Love does not disclose. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. It doesn't take delight in exposing Mm -hmm. things like that. Um, And that's when you can have strong moves of God in a church Mm -hmm. where the the church family loves each Mm -hmm. other. And you know, I've taught my congregation, don't expect perfection out of me and I won't expect it out of you. How about that? (laughs) You know, I'll I'll miss it at times. I may, you know, there have been times I've I've gotten up and I said, you know what? Uh, I, I missed it on that. I repent for that. And I said, if you be forgiving toward me and I'm forgiving toward you, how sweet the family is. I don't look for perfection in people. I just look for ways of helping them come into more of what God has for them. And that's the way that we look at one another. But if we're critical of one another, then we're focusing on what's wrong instead of focusing on what's right. Anyway, praise the Lord. Um, So love in the home, it matters because our home life is our practice for everyday life. Yes, that's true. How we're practicing at home is what we're going to bring to that local church. That's right. So we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Amen. And I tell you what, um, in the local church, it's all about helping people. Yes. It's all about helping people grow up, feeding the word. We partake of the word and we're all growing up together. The motive when it comes to ministry, we're to help one another. Right. Not just the pastor, but the church family. The motive for ministry is one thing, loving people. There's your motive. If it's not love motivating something, we have no business participating with it. It's love that compelled God to send Jesus. It's love that compelled him. And, it, and, and it's that love that Jesus demonstrated throughout his earthly ministry. And love moved him and blessed the people and healed the people and ministered to the people and lifted the people and paid the price for sin so that then the people could come into the same flow as he operated in. And in the church family, that's what we do. We're, We're loving the people, lifting the people, helping the people. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Why? Because we love one another. Amen. I said, we love yes. one another. Yes. You need to talk about, I love my church family. I love my, t- I love my church family. When you say that the devil can't use your mouth against them. Yes. Amen. 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 That's how you establish a love folk. That's how you teach your children. You're not being critical of anybody in the church, That's good. in this home. 
Yes. Yes. Amen. Because we love our church family. Mm-hmm. We're not looking for perfection from them because we're not bringing perfection ourselves. <laughs> you know, we're looking for a, 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 we're looking for a common hunger. We're all hungry yes. for more of God and for more of His Word and to live full of the Word and the Spirit. Amen. Amen. God said something to me years ago. Um, he said, "I will never send you to minister to someone you don't love." That means unlovely people that God may send you to, to minister to them. You have to love them or he'll never send you. If you, if you're a minister and you have a traveling ministry, especially, or a pastor, Mm -hmm. um, if you love people, God will fill your place up. He will fill your place up because God won't send us to some, to minister to someone we don't love. Someone bound by sin, someone bound by habits and addictions and perversions and all kinds of things that destroy people's lives. We're not mad at the people. We want to help them. Absolutely. We want to help them. And so when you love people, then you're giving God the opportunity to use you to help the people. Amen. Love is the greatest qualification for ministering to people. It's the greatest qualification, not power. Love is the greatest qualification because love positions you as a candidate to be a channel for power. Yeah, because love means that um, love, if I could say this, the word talks about love covers sin. What's that mean? If we could say this, if there were a pipe and you're wanting to send water through that, but you see that there's a, that pipe's been compromised, mm-hmm. you could replace that portion of the pipe or you could repair it some, uh-huh. somehow because when you cover that flaw, then now something can flow through yes. it. Yes. That's what love does. It covers flaws. It covers sins. Why? So power can flow and bless that person. Yes. Amen. Amen. We love the unlovely because yes. Jesus died for us when we were sinners. Yes. They don't have to be lovely before we love them. Right. We love them because love's in us. The divine love of God is in us. We're not loving people with human love because that will fall short. We're loving them with the same love that God loves us and it's flowing out of us into them. Amen. Amen. You have what they need. Don't rob it from them by not loving them enough to minister to them. The greater our love for people, the more God can use us. Amen. Amen. We will not be able to effectively minister to anyone we've criticized. That's true. That's true. true. Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean we agree with everyone. We don't, it doesn't mean we agree. Uh, But it means that we make sure we guard our love walk because what is to come for them through us is not criticism, but it's to be help. And I tell you what, love lifts people. It lifts them out of the wrong places and out of difficulties. Amen. Hallelujah. And can I tell you this? You say, Pastor Nancy, I I recognize what you're saying. I'm struggling with that. Can I tell you how to come into the same kind of love for people that God has for them? When you're in fellowship, in the presence of God, spending time in the presence of God, you you take on His flow. Very good. Amen. His nature is in you, yeah. yes. but you take on His way yeah. of flowing and moving right. by yes. being yeah. with Him. Right. The more you're with Him, the more you pick up His flow. Yes. Amen. Well, praise Amen. the Lord. Yes. We're ministering out of our book called Love the Great Quest. We want you to get hold of it because It'll change your life. It'll change your home. It'll change your family. Amen. And uh, it'll make us to where we're, we're, we're more useful to God. That's right. He can use us in a greater way. You can get hold of your copy at DufresneMinistries.org or JesusTheHealer.org. Go there and you can order your copy. We'll get it right out to you. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Love is to lead and govern us, and we are to make it our quest to pursue the way love leads. 
Victories await us as we learn to walk in the truths of divine love found in this book by Nancy Dufresne. Order Love, The Great Quest now at DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. We cannot live the life God authored for us without His power. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne inviting you to join us in Murrieta, California at World Harvest Church for our annual Holy Ghost meetings. The dates are January the 5th through the 10th. We're inviting everyone to go to our website at DufresneMinistries.org and register. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Jesus called healing the children's bread. Nancy Dufresne's book, Daily Healing Bread from God's Table, contains daily portions of healing bread for you to feast on and meditate on in your thought life throughout the day. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. God offers you His thoughts. Take them. This life-changing book by Nancy Dufresne, A Sound, Disciplined Mind, will instruct you on how to do that. It will lift you from a common place into the supernatural. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. It is possible to live untroubled and undisturbed even in the presence of the enemy. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you have received a healing or have any other testimony to share with us as a result of this broadcast, we would love to hear about it. Please call us, write us, or contact us through our website. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach, but a Spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, 
that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning, but this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yes. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I built here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing. If you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play and you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful, and you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible school, I was very career-oriented. I was very education-oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed in my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself. More than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that uh, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.